Hey Canucks fans, the Canucks start their mean nothing games tonight, and it's official. PD has been shut down for the season. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCBC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. This is my Canucks take on one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Thursday, May the 13th. This is where you get Canucks insight that's positive and timely. Shout out to my Hall of Fame members, Jens95, Sim Alexander, Justin Credible, Nux fan number 29. Lucas Gates, Chris Seifert, Adam Broomfield, the Shea Family Channel, and Jamie Sports Talk, and more. Thanks for your support as always, and thanks to the support of all members of all levels. You are listed in my video description. If you want to become a member of the CCC crew, press the join button in underneath this or any of my videos or on the memberships tab on my YouTube channel. Thanks to uh, for your great feedback to my chat with Katie Caldwell yesterday. A bit of feedback here on YouTube, a lot of great feedback on Twitter. And Katie was awesome. She's a beautiful person inside and out. Very honest, humble, transparent, and a lot of good discussion there. Went for almost 50 minutes, but the most meaningful stuff that I think she had to say had to do with the role of women in sports and sports media and her struggles and hopes for for uh, for women in sports media. So wonderful chat. If you have a chance to, to watch it, I would encourage you to do so. Also tonight, 10 p.m. post-game live stream right here on YouTube. Hope that you can join me as always at 10 p.m. Okay, the Canucks have five games left. They're not in the playoffs. By the way, playoff schedule got released today in full. North Division doesn't start actually until the 19th. Uh, Winnipeg and Edmonton start on the 19th. And then uh, Toronto and Montreal start on the 20th. It's weird because uh, the 19th is the last game of the Canucks, Canucks and, and Calgary. And of course, we know that some playoff series are starting as early as this Saturday. So whereas Boston and Washington start this Saturday, the Canucks will still have three games after that to play Sunday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Just a strange, strange um, scheduling quirk because of obviously the COVID outbreak that ripped through the Canucks at the end of March. But it is what it is, so to speak. And for the Canucks final five games, they have one against Calgary, one against Edmonton, and then their final three against Calgary. Edmonton will use that as a tune-up game for the playoffs. Vancouver, Calgary, four games for four te uh, two teams battling, I guess, maybe not to finish last in the division. And um, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. Brock Besser said they're, they're going to play for pride. They still want to win these games. I don't doubt that they want to win these games. You always Obviously, you want to win as opposed to lose. Yes, there's a pride thing, but you also don't want to get hurt. And you're also saying, you know, what's the motivation factor for, say, a veteran as opposed to a young guy who's trying to make a good impression going forward? So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with these games. So let's talk about the lineup for tonight, uh, the lineup overall, and then let's end off by talking about Elias Pettersson. So for the lineup tonight, it's going to be the same 12 guys, <laughs> 12 forwards, and I'll get to why. And then on on the blue, back end, it is... Ole Ulevi coming in for Jack Rathbone. The way Travis Green said it is Ulevi draws in or will play and we're going to give Jack Rathbone a night off. Basically alluding to the fact that Rathbone's probably been the best Canucks defender in the past three games. So, but you want to, you know, right now you're at least you're not sitting any veterans. Although Travis Green said he would be open to rotating some of the veterans in the final five games because they are playing five games in seven nights. Um, and I'll get to that in a second, um, especially if it's Alex Edler's last, you know, last five games as a Canuck. Do you really want to sit him? Maybe sit someone else. But anyways, um, so it's it's uh, Ulevi in for Rathbone and Thatcher Demko uh, comes in for Braden Holtby. Not Braden Holtby's fault. They lost five nothing. The Canucks, um, the the team in, in front of him, the skaters didn't do much to help him. Now, why is it always the same twelve forwards? And why is it no Jonah Gadjevich yet? Jonah Gadjevich. Lockwood still quarantining. It's because Travis Green admitted during his press conference today that the the roster is max. They've used all their recalls, and technically, uh, technically, Gadjevich and Lockwood are on the taxi squad. They they haven't been recalled to the main roster. The Canucks are out of ro uh, recalls because of all their injuries. Right, the fact that guys like Michaelis and Gravak are in the lineup right now because of guys like that Pet Petey Hurt and Vertan in the way and Beagle Mott Roussel. Um, Sutter, all those guys. So he said we have 12 forwards and the eight defensemen. The eight defensemen to me are, of course, Edler, Schmidt, Hughes, Havanick, Myers, Ulevi, Rathbone. And I think it's Chatfield as number eight and not Madison Bowie. But regardless, it's, one of the, it's Chatfield or Bowie as the eighth. So then when it comes to a D perspective, you know, do you sit Edler? Probably not. But maybe do you sit Schmidt or Myers 
get uh, get um, either whoever it is, Chatfield or Bowie in, maybe. Um, you want to see Rathbone again. So on the left side, though, are you going to sit Hughes? So you get Rathbone and Yulevi in at the same time. So there's a lot of things. So Rathbone obviously isn't out because he hasn't playing well. It's because they want to make sure they, they, they continue to see what they have in Ole Yulevi. Up front, it's more cut and dry because they have 12 forwards on the roster. And those are the 12 guys they're going to play unless someone gets injured. So if they go with the same lines, you're looking at something like Miller with Besser and Hoglander, Horvat with Pearson and it's been Matthew Highmore the last little bit. Then a third line of Grayback between Michaelis and Harlock. And a fourth line of Boyd, VC, and McEwen. But those are your 12 forwards. Because Petey's hurt. Mott's hurt. Sutter's hurt. Beagle's hurt. Roussel's hurt. Bertanen away. That's six. Then there's still Bailey, uh, who we know got shut down for the season. So that's at least seven. I'm sure I'm missing a couple guys too. But you can see how the Canucks quickly used up all of their recalls. Now, when Utica's season ends... Then it's like a free-for-all. You can dress whoever you want after that. And then, uh, so I would expect that you, we're going to see Gadjevich and Lockwood in one or both of the final two games of the season, Tuesday night, uh, sorry, Tuesday afternoon and Wednesday afternoon, uh, both against Calgary next week. So we'll monitor that as we go. Last thing, Travis Green said that Pedersen will not play in the final five games of the season. He will said the Canucks they were not weren't being coy about his injury um, on purpose, but they had a, every hope that Pedersen would come back by the end of the season. But that we'll learn more about it at the end of the season, much like when they do all the all the you know season and end interviews and talk about injuries and blah blah blah. Uh, he Pedersen played twenty six. This is the twenty six game he'll be missing if he misses the final four, four after tonight. He'll basically have played in twenty six and not played in thirty. Um, they, no one has said this, but everyone seems to know that it's a wrist injury. I've hinted here before that the, the question was whether or not he needed surgery and whether or not if before the surgery, if he was going to hold off until the season, into the off season, would he actually play through his injury at the risk of making it worse? So obviously he did not. He was uh, working hard to try and get back, but it doesn't make sense, especially if the Canucks are not pushing for a playoff spot nor going to the playoffs. So there's no point risking further injury, um, you know, and, and instead letting him heal. And then if it's a surgery that he has to go into in the off season, so be it. And then we hope that he's ready for October. Now, the only bad thing about that is if he does go into surgery, if he needs surgery, and we, no one knows this, if he does need surgery, could he have done that back in March? Two months ago when he first got injured, perhaps, then that adds two months of recovery time. But then, at, of course, back then, the Canucks were still uh, had hopes, at least for a playoff spot, and therefore had hopes that he was going to come back. So I'm sure we'll hear a lot more about this at the end of next week. But yeah, everyone seems to think it's a wrist injury for Elias Pettersson. And the question is, will he need off-season surgery? I think that's the, the biggest question going forward. But we'll have time to talk about that. Score prediction. Vancouver not playing for anything. Calgary not playing for anything. So that sounds like a 4-2 victory for the Vancouver Canucks to me. So leave your score prediction down below. Leave your comment on the this Lockwood, Gadget, Taxi Squad, roster allocation, call-up issue if you want. Leave a comment about Pedersen if you want. Leave a comment about anything. I'd love to read, react, as, and reply as always. And make sure you join me 10 p.m. tonight for my post-game live stream right here on YouTube. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy. Oh, subscribe if you'd like to. Like this video if you'd like to. Become a member of this channel if you'd like to. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. Have a great day, and enjoy the Canucks game. We'll see you tonight at 10 p.m. God bless, and go Canucks go.